We've all heard about essential oils for hair growth, but sandalwood might just be more than a trend. There are a couple of studies that show promising results for women with a specific type of hair loss. So what can this mean for those of us dealing with hair loss? Well, let's explore the science and learn. Hi, my name is Lynn and welcome or welcome back to my channel where we share information, resources, and encouragement to support you on your hair journey. So a few years back, I was diagnosed with early scarring alopecia and over time have since been on a journey of reversal and restoration. And I'm sharing everything that I'm learning in hopes that it encourages you as well. Today, we're exploring something really fascinating and we're going to be exploring the scent of sandalwood and how it might help hair growth. So before we get started, let's do a couple of caveats. First, I'm sharing this content from a patient's perspective. I am a woman that was middle-aged woman diagnosed with early scarring, scarring alopecia. So I I'm, in a, I'm curious, so I'm looking to see what might be out there that can help us on this journey. Um, and so I am a patient. I am not a doctor. I am not a nutritionist. I am not a hairstylist. Um, I am, however, a doctoral student. So I'm loving that I get to use my uh, sort of research and analytical skills uh, in this process. Um, so all that to say, though, this content is not prescriptive. It is descriptive. So I'm sharing what I'm learning and what I'm seeing. And you and I will link all of these articles below so you can do the same as well. The other caveat is that this really, um, having been on this journey for a while, my experience and that of many others who um, have left comments before and have talked about their journeys, um, understand that this is not like a one, a, a quick fix. Like it's just put this thing on and it's gonna be perfect. Like that just has not been our story and it's okay. That's just the reality of it. So I'm not here to sell or promote any type of quick fix or any type of magic potion um, to for hair growth. That's not, that's not my approach to this process, to this channel. And so let's also be clear about that as well. The other piece is that everybody's experience is different. So what might work for one might not work for the other. And that's okay. That's just a part of this journey as well. So while some people might see great success with something and some people might say, this didn't work for me, uh, that's, we, we all have these unique journeys and even things that might be causing our hair loss is very unique to each individual. So let's be mindful of that as well. And even with that uniqueness and individuality, I am personally, like, I'm excited to see how God, how Jesus will like reach each of us in our unique stories to help us on this journey. So let's get started. So first of all, first off, sandalwood, it's wood. Um, it's a gift from our creator. Um, it's been used in many traditional um, practices, whether it's in medicinal practices or um, traditional practices for many cultures. And only recently modern science has begin, has started to uncover some secrets that we just simply didn't know before. So first up is a study about olfactory receptors. So listen to this, y'all. So our hair follicles, consider them, consider them like little powerhouses in our scalp, right? They aren't just there to grow hair. They can actually smell. Well, sort of, sort of. This is what the art, this is what this study says. Our hair follicles have tiny receptors, like the ones in our nose, that respond to specific smells. And one of those receptors is called OR2AT4. You know I have notes. Um, and it gets activated by a synthetic sandalwood scent called sandalore. So what is sandalore? Sandalore is a synthetic sandalwood scent designed to mimic um, the, the scent of sandalwood. So according to scientists, when the receptor is activated, it tells the hair follicle to keep growing and stay in the active phase of growth called the antigen phase. It's like giving your hair a little pep talk, right? And so here's what scientists found. When they applied sandalore, the synthetic scent of sandalwood, to the hair follicles in a lab, it decreased something called apoptosis, which I'm not sure, is it's a fancy word for cell death. And it increased a growth factor called IGF-1. And so think of IGF-1 like a protein that whispers, keep going, keep going to our hair follicles, right? 
And so what does this mean? It means that the hair follicles stayed in the growth phase longer and were healthier. On the flip side, when researchers blocked the receptor using a, I guess a chemical called Phenerat, it actually slowed the hair growth down. I did link a, a short below by Dr. Mamina, and she also talks about this article um, in a short. So I included her in her take on this particular study as well. It's linked in, in, in the description box below. She also mentioned that actually Phenerat is in, might be in some of the current hair products that we're using, which is a whole other story. But anyway, so what the, the reality is by smelling, smelling the sandalwood scent, it kept the hair follicles in the antigen phase or in the growth phase. So you might be thinking, how does this apply to me or to us? Well, there still needs to be more science around it, but I actually have, I did some research out there. I saw there are quite a few products out there that have sandalwood in it. In fact, I found one dermatologist who had a shampoo conditioner that he developed that had sandalwood in it. And unfortunately, y'all, I can't find it again. I've looked all over. If I find it, I'll link it in the description box. Um, so I think there's, it's clear that there's starting to be some more talk around it. And I'm sure we'll see more information about this going forward. So let me just say this. When I read that, that, that part of the study, I was in awe. Like I am in awe of God that he has such attention to detail that the same receptor in our nostril is actually in our hair follicle. And with the right scent, it can support hair growth. You tell me God is not good. I'm not buying it. So anyway, so that's that. That was the first study. The second study, which is actually, um, I think, even more intriguing, was published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology. And so this study involved 60 women in a randomized trial. And a randomized trial simply means that there was one group who received the treatment and the other group received the placebo. And this group specifically um, included women that were dealing with telogen effluvium, which is a type of hair loss condition that is usually triggered by stress or some type of traumatic event. And um, it usually causes thinning all over the, all over the scalp, rather in one specific spot. And usually regrowth starts within six to nine months, according to dermatologists. There are many of us, including me, who I have a long history with telogen effluvium, and it's clear that it's connected to the scarring alopecia. So anyway, this study was conducted on women with telogen effluvium. So for this study, they used a topical solution of Sansalore um, for 24 weeks. And the results showed that the hair shedding reduced, hair growth took place, and there was increased hair volume. The study also showed that the benefits were noticeable within about eight weeks and the patients were satisfied with the treatment option. So in the study of the women who used the 1% Sandalore, um, again, they saw notice noticeable improvement and um, reduction in the hair shedding. But here's the thing, this study was done with the synthetic version. So then here we go again, another study, and this one was actually a study done on humans that the scent of sal sandalore um, supported hair growth in people dealing, in women dealing with hair loss, telogen effluvium associated hair loss specifically. Again, similarly to the first study, the mechanism that at play was that the sandalore helped the hair follicle stay in the growth phase and also helped prevent cell death. And this study concluded that it could potentially help other types of hair loss as well. Again, more research is needed. And so this got me to thinking, am I willing to try something like this out? Because I still have some, while my hair is all, it's pretty, it's all back. I still have spots that um, in the, top that while you can't see it, I can tell it has a little bit different texture. It's still a little, little thinner, it's especially in that in the crown area. It's fully covered, but it it's a different texture. Like there's still some work to be done there. Um, 
So I'm actually, I made a decision, y'all, that I'm going to try it out. And you know, I don't know if you know this, but if you don't know, I don't like to put topical things on my scalp. Um, I don't do oils. I don't do a lot of the things on my scalp as well. I just, I just, I've just chosen, I've chosen not to do that for the last couple of years. But this study has got me interested in this. And so um, I'm going to try and I'm going to use sandalwood, but, but I'm going to use a hydrosol. Karen Flowers explained what a hydrosol for was to us in our exercise video. So I'm going to link to that there. But a hydrosol is a water-based solution that contains the aromatic compounds of plants. They can be used in skincare, in hair care, um, and as natural remedies. And so I've already done a patch test. I've actually started it four weeks ago. So I'll show you the pictures of where I started um, in terms of my, I'm going to really try it on my edges for the most part, but I think probably around eight to 12 weeks, I'm probably going to include it in my, put a couple of drops of sandalwood essential oil in my shampoo. By the way, do you all use essential oils um, for your hair treatment or your hair regimens? Um, would love to hear what you're using and what's working. Also, have you used them and it didn't work? Let us know that as well so we know we can see if there's any things that we might need to make sure that we're avoiding. The other thing that I would want to share is it might be ideal before you try any of these things is to make sure you either maybe get a patch test from your dermatologist or an allergy test just to make sure that as you're adding these, if you're trying things out, that um, you're not going to trigger a flare up or you're not going to trigger an allergic reaction. Because again, every we're all different. All of us are different in terms of our, our levels of tolerance for certain things. So circle back, hit that. If you hit the subscribe button and you hit the notifications, you'll definitely be notified when I check in in a couple, maybe in eight weeks to let you know how it's working or not. Um, I think it's working though, y'all, because I you you can I'm getting a little bit more hairs. The hairline is is you know it's anyway. I'll keep you posted on the progress. Um, so hit that like, so subscribe and uh, hit the notification button. And that way you'll be notified when I put that video up. While this is exciting, again, it's important to note that everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is unique. It's really critically important for us to understand, understand and get to the root cause of what, um, is the cause of your hair loss so that we're not just trying to put a band-aid on a situation. Um, and at the same time, I think it is important for us to be curious, curious and open. And when we can explore the resources and the things that might be out there to help us reverse and restore our hair. Again, always, I think all this should always be done within the context and the support with your medical professional, with your hair hairstylist, um, because there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. So as we wrap up, I do want to remind you that this journey, while it is about hair, it's not just about hair. It's about discovery. It's about walking on this journey with God, with Christ, with others, with this community, hopefully, and embracing the beauty of who you are right now, today, and at every stage of life. Whether sandalwood becomes a new tool in your arsenal or not, you are beautiful and you are worthy just as you are. So as always, remember, live well, live blessed, nourish your crown, and I'll see you in the next video.